One dimension. Two dimension. Three dimension. We all live in the third dimension, obviously, but how do we recreate that on our flat 2D screens? This cube reminds me of when I was in school, and someone showed me how to draw two squares and connect the corners to create the illusion of a 3D cube. So, as you can imagine, it was artists who were the first to attempt to capture this 3D world on flat 2D canvases, but they didn't always get it right, and sometimes things were a bit off. It wasn't until about 500 years ago that they discovered all lines converged into a single point in the center of the image. This can help reproduce how our eyes see the world. And we can see this principle in our photography today, and we can use one-point perspective in our artwork. Then we invented transistors and computers and video games. I believe the 1990s were the most exciting decade in video games since it was the biggest jump into 3D graphics. Computers were finally processing fast enough and had enough memory for 3D graphics. And just like the artist, things didn't always go smoothly and there were some very rough early 3D games. Then I remember playing these three specific games and thinking, surely these are 3D, right? And they're actually not 3D, they're technically referred to as 2.5D. And let me explain how these game engines actually render the level. Every level is actually a 2D map and drawn with vertical lines. And these lines all together can be pushed up or down or individually based on the distance, and when these two techniques are combined, it can look more like a 3D environment, but there are still so many limitations, like you can never tilt the camera left or right, or see an object rotated in a full 360 degrees. Every line has to stay vertical, even when you look way up or way down. Very impressive for its day, but how do we create real 3D? A screen is just a grid of pixels, with X and Y coordinates, with zero being in the bottom left corner. If you take a point on this grid, let's say 32, 32, and you divide it by 2, the number shrinks in half, and it moves closer to zero, or the origin. If you divide it by a really big number, the point shrinks to almost zero. If we compute this math in real time by dividing x and y point by a z value, representing its depth in space, it will scale to the origin. But check this out. What if we offset the origin by half the screen's width, in other words, pushing the origin to the center of the screen? Now, we have one-point perspective. We don't have to draw every frame by hand, the computer is constantly calculating the perspective for us. Which looks very similar to how a cube in real life would look and scale to the center of a cat, or the screen. And we can use trigonometry to rotate the points before we scale them to simulate a fully 3D rotating cube that can be seen from all sides. But we still have a few problems to solve. So again, the rules in this simulation that we call the real world, objects further away appear to be smaller, and the farther objects are blocked from view behind closer objects. It just works in the real world, but computers don't think for themselves. Computers follow simple instructions in order. Here I'm drawing every polygon in order on this character, and it's a visual mess. But there's a beautiful trick programmers use called backface calling, where we only draw polygons from the front and not the backside. This trick usually cuts down the number of polygons to draw by half. It's starting to look better, but we still have part of the mesh being drawn first when they should be drawn last. So what we have to do is sort all the remaining polygons by their distance and draw back to front. It now looks correct. Our frame rate dropped by a lot due to all the extra calculations and sorting, but it looks correct. And man, imagine if this real world simulation glitched and acted in this same way. Things would be very confusing. But notice how our frame rate has dropped by a lot. It's expensive to make all these sorting calculations, so video game designers in the 90s created some very interesting tricks. I don't know if you also noticed, but early 3D game characters, instead of being smooth, they were these blocky segments. I'll help explain why. We need to first take a look at convex and concave shapes. If we apply the backface culling algorithm from before, the convex shape on the left is perfect. It's going to look great from the perspective view, since there are no faces that are interfering like the concave shape on the right is doing. The shape on the right will need all faces to be sorted in order, which remember takes extra processing time. So if you can build your character into small convex shapes, all you have to do is sort a few chunks and then draw them in order and apply backface culling. Attach these chunks to rotate around bones and you're done. But nowadays, since computers are faster, we can make it all one mesh, which looks a lot better but does take a lot more calculations. 
So that's why even modern games today will sometimes default to the primitive low polygon chunks when the character is far away from the camera to increase the speed. These 3D techniques are also applied to 3D animated movies, but they don't have to render in real time. In fact, oftentimes it can take hours just to render one frame, and then show 24 frames per second and it looks real time. There's a lot more complicated layers to 3D, but I hope this explains how the fundamentals are actually working on screen. So next time you're watching a 3D animated movie or a 3D video game, remember you're watching 2D points being scaled based on their depth towards the center of the screen, creating a one-point perspective, with the remaining polygons being sorted on screen to give your eye the illusion that you're looking at something similar to our real world. This fascinated me as a young kid and made me want to become a 3D animator. It was just real magic to me back then and it still is today. I hope you enjoyed this in some way. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.